All right, here we go. War 9. We are going up against New Nation. Uh, we're we're going to lose this war. Um, had we won, we'd still be in the season. Um, but we're going to drop the ball. I, I'll talk more about that at the end. Uh, so my team is going to be S99, Warlock, and Anti-Venom. Uh, I'm going to be starting out on path two. My first fight is going to be a Killmonger. I'm going to be taking him with Warlock. And I'm going to have one fight, Apocalypse, on 51. That wasn't originally planned for me, uh, but we had to switch some things around last minute. Um, so I'm going to end up taking him with Warlock. Uh, I was pretty happy to have him on the team for that. So it, uh, so it worked out the way it did. So my plan for this one is basically just get to my special two. I did not put suicides on. Uh, I did not think that this Killmonger really needed them. Um, but work to my special two, drop the special two for an armor break, and that way I don't have to worry about reverb. I'm gonna launch it here. Do not have power backs on. Uh, but now he's armor broken, so don't have to worry about reverb. Just gonna work back to my special two. I don't really care if he throws special one or special two. I'm power draining him now anyway. Uh, so, second special two. I really thought this was going to kill, but it doesn't. I'm going to back up to get room to parry, and then just finish him off with hits. And uh, he's going to go down. And then next up, I have Rintra. So, I remove Dex after the Killmonger fight, so that I can hit this guy regular if I want to. And the way that this particular node works, uh, if you duplicate the same action two times in a row... For regular hits, it uh, it pauses your debuff. Or, well, it puts a placebo on you, which pauses your debuff. So I'm going to alternate between hitting him and uh, hitting his block and paying attention to his mystical charges because I'm actually hitting him. So he has eight right now. So I'm just going to counter this special one with a heavy, remove some of them. Now I'm just trying to uh, get him to back off so I can build my ruptures back up. Knock him down with another heavy. I'm not really sure why that didn't remove charges. But what are you going to do? He comes running in here. Wanted to get the pause and the knockdown. Still didn't remove mystical charges. I, bro, I don't, I don't know why it's not removing them. Maybe it's because I had the neutralize on me. And it was giving him a power gain, maybe. I don't know. I didn't see a power gain show up, but... Maybe it was because of the neutralize. Yeah, it didn't it didn't remove them there either. Who the fuck knows? Uh, next up is Mephisto on 20. So I needed Dex off for this fight as well. So it made sense to have two fights in a row where you need Dex off. Um, just going to hit his block. Build up to my 20 ruptures. And uh, normally I'd kind of stay away during Aura of Incineration. Um, this particular one though. If I recall, I didn't really stay away like the whole time. So I'm going to end up eating some damage from it. Because I was trying to get this fight done relatively quickly, I think. Uh, if I recall. Um, but I want to get up to as many debuffs as I can before he triggers his regen there. So that I can kind of prevent it. He didn't get a whole lot. And he's pretty much just popping. And down he's going to go. And now we move into section two. I have this bishop on path six. I'm gonna be taking him not with Warlock, but with Spidey. So because hitting his block gives him prowess and I can just reverse the power gain, Spidey just makes this a much safer fight than Warlock because uh, he's never gonna actually get to throw a special. It's basically just a hit block and pause debuffs kind of fight. And uh, very safe, very, very, uh, relatively quick, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's really, it's really all there is to say about this one, just hit block and pause your debuffs, and he's just gonna go down.
Next up is the Chavez. So I can't pause. Well, I, I can pause. I can't parry on this node. Um, so depending on <laughs> her AI, <laughs> like that fucking random start out the fucking fight heavy. Um, I'm going to hit her block, depending on her AI. If she comes in too much, I really don't want to get backed into a corner. So after her heavies, rather than just dashing away, I'm going to hit her regular. Now she has four different dimensions open right now, but I have a wither on her. I'm about to get a second one here. And the fight's pretty much almost over already. <laughs> uh, so she's just very, very heavy, happy here. Just trying to bait this special one out of her. If she doesn't want to throw it, that's fine. I'm just going to hit her block. Now she throws it, reverses all of her power. I'm going to go back to regular hits. Four hit combo, back off. Build up more ruptures. And if I recall, I'm just going to take her down with the ruptures. Because I don't think she's going to throw another random heavy. Yeah. And down she goes. Next up is this Apocalypse on 51. So... We had a different player assigned here, but we had to switch things up last minute. So I'm taking him with Warlock, and this is a relatively safe, simple fight for Warlock. Because of the tactic, I can 5-hit combo, because I can just remove the prowess, and without the prowess, the puncture doesn't really do too much. Uh, so no special 1s, no special 2s, because both of them apply debuffs. So it's just going to be five hit combo, special threes, block all specials. And uh, it's going to be a relatively long fight, but a very, very safe one and relatively simple one. So I'm going to let it play out and I will come back when it is finished. All right, so took my suicides off after the Apaco fight. I did put them on for that fight. Um, and uh, here is my good old buddy, Mangog, and my former alliance mate, King Dragonite. So I just <laughs> ate a fucking heavy to the face, which happens to me in this fight probably once every, like, six months. It just, uh, it just happens sometimes. Um, <laughs> I think this dude just gets really fucking mad. That I'm always fucking destroying him on this node. Uh, but either way, I gained power quicker than I normally would. So got my three exhaustions, my two withers. And now I'm just going to work hitting his block. And uh, yeah, I mean, y'all have seen this fight a thousand times before. So I'm going to let this one play out and uh, I will come back. So, we ended up losing this one. 
we uh, we dropped three before they even started clearing, if I recall, and uh, they ended up clearing the, the whole thing with just one death, which, uh, hell of a fucking performance, New Nation. Um, I have a lot of buddies over there, a lot of former Alliance mates, a lot of friends from chats who have joined there recently, and uh, one hell of a war. Congratulations, guys. I think this is the first time that Noon has beaten GT in a legit war in, like, the past 10 seasons, I think. Um, so, it's been a long time coming, just like the salty loss was, and uh, it just seems to be the story of this season for us. Um, it is a lot of little mistakes, stuff, things that we normally wouldn't make mistakes on, and all of them seem to happen in the same fucking season. <laughs> so, we are out of it. Salty will be war champs. Um, all they need to do is handle their business the next three wars. And uh, unless they face New Nation or TCN and those guys can steal a win off of them, um, they got it. So congratulations to Salty on war champs because I do believe that that is what's going to happen. Um, and uh, congratulations to New Nation. I love you guys. Um, and uh, yeah, GG's. Good fucking war, boys. Good fucking war. But uh, that's all she wrote for now. Thank you very much for watching.